you love her, let me hear you say. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Jesus Christ, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and welcome you this morning. This morning that a day that we have not seen nor witnessed before, nor will we ever see again. And we just want to just give God the glory, give him the praise. Because if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Lord, we just thank you for all of your blessings, all of your blessings, all of your blessings. And right now as we center ourselves to go in prayer, I would ask that each and every one of us just close our eyes and right now just call out names, oh Father. Just call out names of those persons that you know, that God knows their name already. But just call out names right now. For we know that when prayers go up, that blessings come down. God knows us better than we know ourselves. We just thank him, thank him, thank him for all of his blessings. But right now, just call out names. Just call out names. Because God hears everything. Father God, we come to you now, Lord, just to say thank you. We thank you, oh Father God, most of all for our early, early morning rising. We know, oh Father God, that it wasn't the alarm clock, but we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was you who woke us up to allow us to see a brand new day. And Father God, we just thank you Thank you, thank you, thank you. With everything that's going on in the world today, God, we just say thank you. And Lord, teach us. Teach us, oh Father God, to stop complaining about what we don't have. And thank God for what we do have. For God, we know that there's always, always someone, somebody, that's worse off than we are. It's not that we've been so good or so great, but because of your grace and your mercy. If we had 10,000 tongues, God, we could not thank you enough. Lord, we just thank you. 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 Lord, right now, and I'm asking, oh Lord, that you would just... Send down your Holy Spirit, oh Father God, that some dying man, woman, or child, oh Father God, may cry out, oh Father God, what must I do to be saved? For sometime the road gets a little rocky, oh Father God, and we lose faith, we lose hope. 
But Father God, I thank you. I thank you for the word. I thank you for the word, oh Father God. And you said if we hide it in our hearts, oh Father God, that whenever we need it, oh Father God, we know because it is written in our hearts. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Father God, those that may be traveling wherever, going on vacation, God, we ask that you give them travel and mercies. Because just because we leave our homes, that don't mean we're going to make it back there. Lord, allow us to stop taking so many things for granted. Even the families that we have, we're not perfect. But top Stop taking them for granted, oh, Father God, and allow us to be thankful and grateful for brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, uncles, friends. Stop taking it for granted. God, right now we're asking that you would just send down your Holy Spirit that the shepherd of this flock will have a word for us today. For this journey that we are on, it's a long journey. Sometime the road may be wide and sometime it may be narrow. Father God, we just ask that you would give him a word for us, your children today, that we can go on a little while longer. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Metropolitan thanks you, oh Father God. Those that are with us, Lord, I just ask a special blessing. For I don't know, but I know that you know. Whatever it may be. whatever it may be. Lord, we love you. We love you and we glorify your holy and righteous name. Let the church say amen, amen, amen.
have my sorrow over my tomorrow. You've been so faithful, Jesus. You've been, Lord, you've been so faithful. One more time. Has he been faithful? You've been, you've been, you've been, hey, Lord, you've been so faithful. If he's been faithful, I dare you wave your hand and say, God, you've been faithful. Come on. Say, you've been, hey, Lord, come on. You've been so faithful. Come on, stay right there. Wave your hand and say, Lord, you've been faithful. You, even when man turned their back on you. Lord, you've been so faithful. Even when the church turned their back on you. Say, Lord, you've been so faithful. You've been, hallelujah. Lord, you've been so faithful. When your parents turned their back on you. Come on, you've been faithful, Jesus. You've been here. Lord, you've been so faithful. Uh, even those of time that didn't say what you wanted me to say. Come on, Metropolitan. Has he been faithful? Has he been faithful? The old say you to say, down through the years, the Lord's been faithful to me. He's been keeping me. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, he's been faithful. Come on, I don't know what you're going through. Hallelujah. But look at somebody and say, he's been faithful. He's been a keeper. He's been a healer. He's been a sustainer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's been faithful. Hallelujah. Somebody. Hallelujah. He's been faithful. Hallelujah. He's been faithful. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lift, lift the camera up just a little bit. Don't zoom He's in, zoom out. Faithful. Yeah, there you yes, go. Praise Lord. the Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody just said you amen. Yeah. Yeah. And as, and as Sheldon continues to play that, and he can keep saying it out in care this morning, I... I'm going to go on the other side because I have not had any time to really get myself into worship. Um, it's funny when the devil does all the devil can do to try to mess you up. Man. For those of you who are in our virtual worship service this morning, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you telling us what's going wrong and what you can't hear. And, but it's a distraction because then we are so busy trying to work and accommodate you all that it causes us not to be focused on just how good the Lord has been. But in spite of everything that has happened this morning, I can stand here and tell you that the Lord has been faithful. So we're going to change some stuff around this morning, Miss Geraldine, because... I just need at least an extra 10 minutes to be able to, I think I could just move for, I, I think my watch, Yolanda told me, I had been active for 20 minutes, because I've been moving around for 20 minutes now, trying to figure out what the problem was, and, and you know, Miss Gertrude, when the Lord called me, he, he called me here to, yeah, see how the devil acts, amen, to preach the good news, but sometimes you got to put on your, your tech hat, your staff parish hat, your trustee hat, your church council hat. But in spite of all that, the Lord has been faithful. And I wouldn't change a thing. Because as I look back over my life, that's a good thing. Amen. Amen. So I pray right now in our virtual world that everybody heard Sheldon. Um, I didn't really like being on the screen just now, <laughs> making changes. But... We're going to have it all figured out by, by next Sunday. But here's the thing, you all. It's technology. And technology always tries to throw a loop in the plan. And we all know that this is a worship service. And a worship service is always subject to change. Subject to change. So I guess if you weren't able to hear, I, I, there's no way that we can rewind um, we're going to keep going forward. But how many of us, whether you're here physically or you in the virtual service and space this morning, are just thankful that the Lord woke you up and started you on your way? If it's all right, can we go back to that song? Is that all right? And just talk about how good the Lord has been. 
Lord, you've been so faithful. I dare you lift your hands if he's been faithful. Come on. You've been, you've been, hey, Lord, you've been so. If you're not ashamed, go ahead and stand to your feet and say, God, you've been, you when the doctors weren't faithful, Lord, you've been so faithful. When my wife wasn't faithful, when my spouse wasn't faithful, you've been, come on, you've been, Lord, you've been so faithful. Lord, you've been so When your bank account wasn't faithful, Lord, you've been faithful, Jesus. You've been here, Lord, you've been so faithful. He's trustworthy. You can trust in Jesus. You've been you. Yeah, Lord, you've been so faithful. Come on, let's go back. I can never repay you. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you lose my shirt, because then you said, How you made a way, how you made a way out of no way. Turn my darkness in today. You've been my joy in the time of sorrow. Hope oh, my tomorrow. Peace in the time of storm. Strength when I'm weak in the world. I can never repay you. For what you done for me How you lose my shackles and you set me Come on How you made a way out of no way Turn my darkness in today Be my joy in the time of sorrow Hope oh, for my tomorrow Peace in the time of storm Strength when I'm weak in the world You've been Come on Lord, come on Tell your neighbor, say neighbor He's been, he's been, he's been Say he he, Lord, he's been so faithful. Come on, tell somebody. He's been, he's been, he's been. Yeah. Lord, he's been so faithful. Can we lift it up a little more? Come on, you've been, you've been, you've been. I dare you worship him right here. Lord, you've been so faithful. Every time I turn around, you keep on blessing God. You've been faithful. Come on. Lord, you've been so faithful. Come on. A few more times. You've been, you've been, you. Get that in your spirit. Lord, you've been so faithful. Hallelujah. Can I change up the lyrics a little bit? Lord, I, Lord, I am so grateful. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Grateful God that you've been faithful. You've been, you've been, Lord, you've been so faithful. I'm sorry, this is personal. Hey, Lord, you've been, you've been, yes, Lord, Lord, you've been so faithful. Even though sometimes I didn't say what you wanted me to say. Come on, come on, come on, lift up some worship. Come on, lift up some worship. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up some worship. If you know that the Lord we serve is faithful. Hallelujah. He's faithful. He's faithful. Hallelujah. He's faithful. Hallelujah. He's faithful. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. 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 He's faithful. Yes, he is. Yes, Lord. Faith.
Good morning, church. Our scripture will be coming from Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 15. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 15. The fullness of life in Christ. As you, therefore, have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all of our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Amen. Please stand for our gospel lesson. Our gospel lesson is coming from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. And it reads, He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, you will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if a child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to get it together. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't you put your hands together and give God another praise. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I don't know about you all this morning, but I lost a lot of things in life. But one thing I never lost. One thing I never lost. One thing I never lost. I never lost my praise. 
I've lost some good friends along life's way. Some loved ones departed in heaven to stay. But thank God I didn't lose everything. Listen, I've lost faith in people who said they cared. But in the time of my crisis, they were never there. But in the midst of my disappointment, in my season of pain, one thing never wavered, one thing never changed. I never lost my hope. Yeah. Come on, church. Hey, thank you, Lord. I never lost my joy. Oh, I never lost my faith. But most of all, oh, I never lost my parade, my parade. Yes, Lord, it's still here. Still here. I've let some blessings just slip away When I went my own way and went astray But thank God I didn't lose everything Disappointment in my season of pain. Thank God, one thing never wavered, one thing never changed. I never lost my hope. Yes, Lord. Oh, and I never lost my joy. Through all the hurt, through all the pain, I never lost my faith but most of all oh, I never lost my parade come on let's sing it one more time I never lost my hope I never lost my hope yes Lord lost a lot of things in life but I never lost my joy y'all still here my praise my praise is still here still here lost a lot of things in my life but my praise is still here still here lost some loved ones but my praise one more time still here lost some people in my life but my praise is still here still my joy even though I wanted to give it up sometime but I never lost my faith but most of all oh, thank you Jesus I never lost my praise If you never lost your praise, thank you, Lord. Just lift your hand and thank the Lord. Just thank the Lord. I'm going. I'm going ask. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. Ask. Um, I'm going to ask Sheldon to do something for me. 
Because this morning, the title of the, of the text is going to be um, Ask for What You Need. So this morning, I'm going to ask Michael for what I need. Um, so Sheldon, I'm going to ask you to give me a little bit of my exodus. And then I'm going to ask you to figure out how to transition that into gyra. Mm. Yeah, see, I ask for what I need. And I'm crazy enough to believe that if I ask for it, the Lord will give it to you. Amen. Amen. to do is hurt me, hurt me. Sometimes you got to reach back in your spirit and sing Lord, deliver me, cause all I seem to do is hurt me. Have you ever been there? Uh, hurt me. Sometimes you can't find the word, so you gotta say, you gotta say, oh Lord, say, oh, oh Lord. Yeah. Oh Lord, deliver me. Come on, hallelujah. Hey, deliver me. Come on, this is my exodus. 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 Thank you, Lord. I'm saying goodbye to the old me. Thank you, Lord. Come on, one more time. This is my exodus. Oh. This is my exodus. Thank you, Lord. Say, I'm saying goodbye. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes you, you don't have the words when you say, Oh, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Deliver me. You're enough for me, Jesus. You're enough for me, Lord. Deliver me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh, Lord. Oh, oh, Lord. Deliver me. All I need is you today, oh, Lord God. Deliver me. Yes, Lord. Jireh, you are enough. Is he enough for you today? Jireh, you are enough. If you know what saying with me, I will be content. And I will be content in every circumstance. You are Jireh, you are enough. Can we sing that today? Tell him he's enough. Say, Jaira, Jaira. Come on, you are enough. Come on, if he's enough for you. Say, Jaira, Jaira, Jaira. You are enough. Yeah, and I will be content. I will be content. In every circumstance. Yeah. You are Jaira. You are enough. Amen. Amen. I will be content. <laughs> I'll be content. 
every circumstance. Whether I'm sitting on a, in a chair meditating, <laughs> whether I'm running around like a chicken without a head, but in every circumstance, I will be content. Let's look back at this 11th chapter of Luke, verses 5 to 13, and we've already heard it read by Michelle, but if it's all right with you this morning, I would like to reread it from the Message Bible, because in the Message Bible, Miss Jeanette Eugene Peterson says it like this, starting at verse 5 and reading through verse 13. Then he said, imagine what would happen if you went to a friend in the middle of the night and said, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. An old friend traveling through just showed up, and I don't have a thing on hand. The friend answers from his bed, don't bother me, the door's locked, my children are all down for the night, I can't get up to give you anything, but let me tell you, even if he won't get up because he's a friend, if you stand your ground, knocking and waking all the neighbors, He'll finally get up and get you whatever you need. Here's what I'm saying. Ask and you'll get. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will open. Don't bargain with God. Yeah. Be direct. Ask for what you need. This is not a cat and mouse hide and seek game we're in. If your little boy asks for a serving of fish, do you scare him with a live snake on his plate? If your little girl asks for an egg, do you trick her with a spider? As bad as you are, you wouldn't think of such a thing. You're at least decent to your own children and don't you think the father who conceived you in love will give the Holy Spirit when you ask him my brothers and sisters the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God thanks be to God and just let me remind everyone first let me say once again good morning and it is so good to be here with all of you whether you are in the building physically or whether you are in our virtual worship space it's just good to know that the Lord has kept us for another week for another week before I forget I got to call out some people. Angie, I need to see you after service. Don't worry. It's not like you're going to the principal's office. Just need to ask you something. That's all. That's all. But can we all remember? Because remember, we still re reading Luke. And if you go back to that ninth chapter, it would remind you that Jesus is still wearing that headed to Jerusalem. Yeah. And, and so as Jesus still makes his way to Jerusalem, uh, we need to understand he's still taking the time out to teach whenever and wherever he can. As we come into this 11th chapter, remember he had just left the house of Martha. A and now we find him talking about a subject. I, I think we can all agree on Rhonda that he knew a little something about prayer. And uh, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray and what to pray for. He, he then explains it to all of us. After all, prayer was integral. It was an integral part of Jesus' life. Uh, think about it. It's said in the text, not only in the text, but in the book over and over and over again. There were times when Jesus would withdraw to a deserted place to pray. At other times, it, it, it reminds us that he went out to the mountain to pray. It, it let us know he spent the night in prayer to God. He, he prayed before he chose his disciples. He, he prayed when he fed the 5,000. He, he prayed the night 
before he died. And last but not least, he prayed from the cross. And so after explaining to the, to the disciples the manner in which they should pray, he then goes on to tell a parable. He tells of the person who goes to a friend at midnight. We gonna sit right there for a little while, Alan. Midnight. The middle of the night. Midnight. Supposedly, they say, the darkest part of the night. And at midnight, a knock comes at the door. Now, there are some of us who don't open the door in the middle of the day. And now there's a knock at midnight. And, and notice, if you will, that initially, the friend does not respond. And I just like to ask how many of us here this morning understand there may be times when the only reason the Lord hears our prayer, uh, our prayers is because of our persistence. So just by a show of hands, if you're in the virtual space, um, wave or lift your hand or just comment um, how many of us have ever asked for something before just by show of hands now I'm going to just tell y'all right now I'm not going to look at anybody specific Mr. Melvin I'm going to look at the door every hand in here thank you Michael Sims should have gone up because all of us were children at one time and we all asked for something. Uh, there's this time of year called Christmas and you write a list out what well, that meant you asked for something. There's this day that comes around once a year called your birthday and even if the only thing you ask for is for the Lord to allow you to get up in the morning then that yeah. means that you've asked for something. So for us to sit here like I ain't putting my hand up. We have all asked for something at one time or another. If we have children, you're not going to tell me and I'm not going to leave here believing that somewhere in your child's life you didn't get down on your knees and say, Lord, I don't know where my child is right now, but if you could just stop by and put a... F We've all asked... Uh, for something. See, I, maybe some of y'all thought I was going to ask a question after that that you didn't want to ask. But the question simply was, how many of us in here or in the virtual worship have ever asked for something? But I need you to know, here's the problem. Uh, Michael, I don't even need the paper no more. We're going to just go ahead and preach and get out of here. Some of us don't know how to ask, Kip. Uh, let me, uh, well, y'all can preach to y'all because most of all y'all from here and you all going to come back next Sunday prayerfully. Amen. Um, how many of us remember the first time we asked the Lord to send us that special somebody? Hey, look at y'all. Thank you, Yolanda. Yeah, she gave it a half because she didn't want Alan to be saying, girl, put your hand. <laughs> all of us have gotten to a place before where we ask the Lord to send that special someone. Yeah. But here's the thing, Sheldon. Yeah. We just say, Lord, send me somebody. And so the Lord sends you a man or a woman, and then we start complaining because they're not the person that we wanted. But your prayer request was, Lord, send me somebody. See, the problem with us, Linda, is we got to learn how to get down and be more specific. Lord, I need you to send me somebody who will help pick me up when I fall down. I, I need you to send me somebody that when I find myself struggling will help me get back on the right road. Can you send me somebody that wasn't saved from birth but went through a few things? just like me and understands that it's nothing but God's grace and mercy that helped us get up this morning. I need you to send me somebody that when I pray, they pray. When I cry, they'll cry. When I shout, they'll shout. When I laugh, they'll laugh. Ask 
for what you need. Some of y'all say, Lord, give me a new job. And then the Lord gives you a job. And you get on that job on day one because you got a new job. And then you find out that the grass isn't always green on the other side. And then you begin to ask Jesus, Miss Odessa, well, Lord, why'd you give me this job? And somewhere the Lord has stopped by and said, your prayer request was, give me a new job. You didn't tell me that you want a job where folks don't get on your nerves, where the boss leaves you alone, where you get time to take your lunch break. And when payday comes, you get to walk out saying, I'm in the money. You asked for a job? I gave you a job. Church folk. Church folk. Come on. We ask. Sure wish we could get some people in the building. But then when the people come. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. Come on. That is true. We ask for people in the building. We didn't ask for a specific type of person. We just asked for people to sit in the pew. You got to learn how to be more specific. And sometimes you got to learn how to pray for it more than one night, more than two seconds. Sometimes you got to get down on your knees every single day of the week and say, Lord, I'm struggling and I just need you to help me to get through. I think that's why the hymn writer penned the words, Denise, that said, ask the Savior to help you. She didn't stop right there. She said, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. See, every now and then, all of us need just a little bit of comfort. So Jesus came along. Let, let, let's go back to something that we all know it's not in here, and I need to look and make sure I say it right. I, I, I want to, I mean, I know it, but I, I want to make sure y'all don't think I'm making up something. Um, it said that he taught them, because the disciples said, Lord, please, please, Lord, teach us how to pray. And he said, well... When you come to your father, say these words. Father, hallowed be your name. Didn't say hallowed be my name, but hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. In other words, if you can just give me enough bread for the day, I'll be satisfied. All right, let me, let, let me help because I'm almost finished. I feel good. I feel like preaching just for about two more minutes. Uh, some of us get to complain and say, Lord, can you bless me financially? Um, let's see who can I look like. Uh, Miss, Miss Churchill, what does being blessed financially look like? Because for some people it means if I can just pay my bills not have my house taken not have my car repoed and just be able to make it from week to week i've been blessed financially but there are some of us gerald who says lord when i said um bless me financially i i meant uh you know bless me with like a million dollars um, and i can imagine miss miss gertrude that jesus looks down on us and says well i blessed you with a thousand last week and I still haven't seen my 10%. Yeah. So ain't no sense of me giving you a million. See, if we don't learn how to take care of a little bit, we sure enough ask for what you need. I, I, I can't tell them about you all, but I imagine there are some pastors, I'm not one of them, praise the Lord, who <laughs> say, you know, Lord, can you just send me and have the conference appoint me to another church be careful what you ask for because all you asked for to be was appointed to another church so now your appointment comes and you walk on up in there because you didn't got a new appointment and when you walk in the door you see another Rhonda another Sheldon another Miss Jeanette and you go hold on Lord I, I asked to go to another church and the Lord says, I sent you there. But what you should have asked for was, Lord, send me to a church where we stand with open and outstretched arms just like you. Where we welcome those who have and those who have not. 
where we want those to come in because they don't know Jesus for the pardoning of their sins. We don't care how they look. We don't care how they talk. We don't care how they walk. We don't care how they pray. We don't care how they sing. All we want is some people to come in and say, there is a name I love to hear. I love to sing. It's worth. It sounds like music in my ear. It's the sweetest name on earth. Lord, I, I want to be in a church where the people understand what you meant when they wrote in your word. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Lord, I want to be with a group of folks that understand what it means. No weapon formed against me. In other words, when folks try to tear me down, no weapon formed against me. In other words, when folks try to step on me, no weapon formed against me. In other words, when folks try to run away from me, no weapon formed against me. Every now and then, we got to be specific in our prayer life. Let me give you an example and I'm done. Uh, let me think of one that y'all think ain't me because y'all going to go home and analyze this and say, he's he talking about himself. No, nah, I ain't talking about myself. It's just where the Lord has me right now. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm in a place and people aren't recognizing me and I, I want to go to a different place. Well, let me tell you this. If the only reason you're in that place is to get recognition from the people, you got to change your prayer right away. Because instead of worrying about the recognition from the folks, what you need to do is say, Lord, put me somewhere where at the end of the day when I get home, I can look to the hills from whence cometh my help and simply ask myself, did I do what was pleasing to the Lord? And if I can say yes, then my prayer was not in vain. I don't want to please man or woman. I just want to please the Lord. But I'm so glad that the Lord has allowed me to mature just a little bit. And I've become a little more specific in my prayer life. How many of us have children? And how many of us pray day and night that our children will do better? <laughs> okay. Remember, can't nobody see right now but me. And that's how I want to keep the camera. So let me change the question. How many of us know our children have messed up? Oh, I just got messed up kids on this side, okay. I guess that's why I'm on this side. We got, we got messed up children on this side. Or maybe I should ask it this way, uh, uh, Michael. How many of our children have messed up and we just don't know about it? Yeah. Yeah, now we, yeah. I, I was young at one time. I know how we do this thing. And, and how many of us have found ourselves and we say, oh, Lord, please, please, um, just make my child better. But what you got to learn and understand is just because we got it at a certain age doesn't mean they going to get it at the same age. So sometimes in our specific prayer, we got to just ask the Lord, Lord, I don't know when and I don't know where, but I'm just down here on my knees praying that eventually he or she will get it. Eventually he or she will learn how to rely on you eventually he or she will move everything that's not believe me when I tell you I, 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 I understand what those prayers are um, because I think we still pray them and I think we pray them until we go home because there's always somebody that we gonna pray for some of us have grandchildren so now our prayer is Lord please don't let them grow up to be like their parents. Let them be a little better. Let them catch it a little faster. Um, some of our prayers have even been, you know, Lord, for everything this child gave me. Let life be a circle so that they can understand it. I never understood what my father said. He said one, one day he said to me, don't worry. 
when you get older, everything you ever did to me is going to come back to you. And I was like, oh, that's so mean. Why would you say that? But now I understand because people are people. And the same things we did, they did it too. But we got to learn to ask for what we need. Some of us think this Jesus thing is supposed to be like a microwave. Um, I know some of y'all are microwave connoisseurs. And you only have to read the directions. You know, put the bag in. You know how long to press it for. And you get this perfect meal that comes out. That ain't the way prayer and Jesus work. Sometimes Jesus has to allow us to be in the midst of the mess just for a little while. And I never understood that. I, I, I'm, I'm going to talk to Miss Gertrude for a while because I know people like Miss Gertrude. I know people like Mr. Melvin. I know people like Miss Odessa and Miss Geraldine and anybody else, probably Miss Susie. Um, you, when you get to a certain age, you understand how this prayer life works. Um, I'm not saying that those of us younger than that don't understand, but what I'm saying is this. See, when you get to a certain age, you understand that sometimes you can't just give it one time. It says, take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. But just because on Sunday you say, Lord, I'm tired, give me some relief. Doesn't mean on Monday you're still not going to be tired. And you got to come back and say, Lord, I'm tired. Give me some relief. Because see, this prayer thing and life itself works in his time not ours because if it worked in ours trust me when I tell you the church would be full it'd be standing room only lives would be being changed every day people would be coming to Christ every day but I've come to understand that if we don't ask for it you all do realize everybody on Queenstown Road ain't saved right Okay. As much as we want to say, we, we all realize that everybody in Baltimore County ain't saved. Everybody in Anne Arundel County ain't saved. There's some folks that don't know Jesus. And guess what? It's our job to go find them. This, this, this religious thing, it's not like a fraternity or a sorority. Well, in fact, I can't say that because even a fraternity and sorority is open up for everybody. You just got to be one of the lucky ones. But with Jesus, it ain't about luck. It's just about coming to her. It's just about coming to her. If you know somebody that's lost, if you know somebody that's struggling, pray for them this week. Not one day. Pray seven days. Pray the whole week for them. Because eventually, the text said, we knocked on the door and the friend said, look, I don't have time to come to you right now. But what I liked about how the message said it is, if you keep knocking and you make enough noise, Imagine what Miss Geraldine and Mr. John would do if at midnight I came knocking on the door saying, Miss Geraldine, let me in. I found somebody and we just going to pray for him. Now, knowing Miss Geraldine, she's going to answer the door right away. But just in case she said, Pastor, right now I'm asleep. Could you come back tomorrow at about 9 o'clock in the morning? And I kept on knocking. And I kept knocking, but then I started yelling. Miss Geraldine, Mr. John, open the door. She gonna come to the door now. Cause the first thing they don't want, and this is anybody, don't nobody want the next day your neighbor saying, um, Miss Geraldine, who was that fool knocking on your door last night? <laughs> so you gonna get me in as quick as possible just so I'll be quiet. And sometimes guess what? That's what the Lord wants us to do. The Lord wants us to keep on keep on keep on knocking keep on praying keep on searching keep on asking because eventually we most of us in here i think have a house right most of us and when you got that house wasn't one of your prayers lord i can't wait till this house is paid off now it may have taken some time but every week when the check came lord i can't wait till this house is paid for and most of us do 30-year deals. So guess what? We've been praying for almost 30 years. Lord, I can't wait to get this house paid for. Lord, I can't wait to get this car paid for. Lord, I can't wait for my children to get out of college. Lord, I can't wait until I'm retired. And then that day comes. 
but it don't mean our prayer changes. Because then after that, we got something else to pray about. Lord, I can't wait until everybody loves the Lord as much as me. Lord, I can't wait till people just start running and giving their lives back to you. Because I know when that happens, I know the world is going to change and be a better place. Keep praying, y'all. But just learn how to ask for what you need. When your prayer is not specific enough, you can't get upset with the Lord. Because he's going to give you just what we ask for. I pray, and I meant to tell you all this when I started. Um, uh, the youth gave me this shirt, and it's probably one of my favorite shirts because it says, um, be careful, you may end up in the sermon. And I believe this morning, all of us should have been in the sermon. Because all of us have come to a place where we've gone to the Lord, but we have not asked for exactly what it is that we needed. I can, I can, I can joke with Sheldon because he won't go home mad at me. If I came in and said, Lord, give me a musician, and they sent me Sheldon, and the only thing he knew how to play was chopsticks, I can't be upset because all I asked for was a musician. But if I said, Lord, send a musician this way, I'm sorry, I stay right here. Then you don't have to move. I stay right here, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lord, send me a musician that even if the word of God isn't preached can allow the spirit to flow all throughout the building that can reach the young and the old that is not afraid to worship to whomever God's people look like and who just wants to give Christ through the gift that you have given to them. That's a specific prayer. And if Sheldon were the one to walk in, the only thing I could do is lift my hand and say, Lord, I thank you. Because I asked for what I needed and you sent it this way. If I ask to um, think about it, um, I can talk about him because he don't get upset either. How many of us remember when Brother Nat was about to go and have his surgery? And I'm sure that there are several people in here who asked one thing. Lord, regardless of what goes on, just allow Brother Nat to come through. And not only did the Lord allow him to come through, but the Lord gave him a new walk. See, so you, you got to learn how to ask for what you need. Um, I asked this morning that if there's someone who does not know Jesus for the pardoning of your sins, whether you're in this building or you're in our virtual space, that you understand that it is not too late to make a change in your life. That you understand that it's not too late to come back to the one who created us in the first place. I asked this morning that if you, if and when you leave this place, Go tell somebody about how good Jesus has been to you. And then keep planting the seed. Keep watering. But more, more than that, keep praying. But if you don't know Jesus this morning, we ask if you're in the building, lift your hand. We ask that if you're in our virtual space, comment, email, text, send a chat. Because all we really want to do is tell everybody about how good the Lord has been. And if it be the Lord's will, we will see you next Sunday filled up and on fire once again as always at the best united methodist church on queenstown road how many people feel a little okay i'm sorry thank you um also if you have watched this this morning virtually or even if you're sitting here and you would like to contribute to the ministries that go on this on in this place we ask that you either send a check or mail us a a a love offering to metropolitan united methodist church 548 queenstown road 7 Merlin 21144. If you're in the area, just drive by and drop it in our drop box. You can go on our website and donate through our PayPal account. You can pay through your personal bank. You can go on Givelify. You can go on our Cash App where we are located at dollar sign 548 MUMC. And of course, if you're in the building, as always, you can leave it as you go out. But this morning, I simply ask that the Lord continue to keep you. Do not forget that women of faith are going to sight and sound 
to see, I believe, Daniel, right? David, David, David. I'm sorry, David. To go see David. That is going to be on November 4th. Um, the cost is $155, and there's a $100 down payment that is, I believe, non-refundable. Amen. But more than that, I just pray that the Lord this week, not only this week, but each and every day, just continues to bless you, continues to keep you. Um, I pray, for, and I am so thankful that we have seen some people in here this morning that we have not seen in a minute. I pray that the Lord continues to bless and keep you. But more than that, I just ask that the Lord continue to shine his love, his favor, his grace, his mercy, his hope and the peace, not only down on us, but in, on every single person that we come in contact with. I pray that, the, that we allow somebody to see the light of Christ and the love of Christ in each and every one of us. Until next week, God bless you. And may heaven continue to shine and smile down upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face towards you. Sheldon continues to play um, this morning. Well, yeah, this morning, um, right after the benediction, right after the amen, um, I would ask you all to not just run out, but I would ask you all to meet me on the fellows, in, in the fellowship hall, I'm sorry, on the other side. Um, you all have been so gracious enough to, to prepare a meal. Some of y'all didn't even know y'all cooked this morning, amen. You all have been so gracious enough to plan and have a welcome back um, for not lunch. Thank you, Ron, but lunch for, for me, um, for my wonderful better half. And I pray that you all do not leave without at least sitting down, taking something, or just allowing me to, to greet you this morning once I get on. You keep playing, Sean. I'm sorry. Once I get on the other side. Um, the other thing is let me apologize um, formally to... I'm Joanne Poole. Joanne had asked me, and I heard her, but I did not hear her. And what I was supposed to do is I was supposed to tell Alan to make sure we got a propane delivery, and I did not do that. Um, so I take responsibility for that. But in spite of all that, um, it's still good know, to know that the Lord continues to keep us. The Lord continues to bless us. And once again, God bless each and every one of you. Um, please stop over. They've decorated it. It looks great. Um, you all stop and come on over. Let's talk. Let's chat and chew for a little while. Um, so what I'll do is, I guess, while I'm here, amen, we can, no, no, let me, let me, yeah, because he in the back. Let me ask uh, <laughs> Michael Sims to come on up and bless the food. Amen. Bless the food. Come on. Um, you all, you all, you all can cut it. You, you can cut it. You can cut it. God bless you. God bless you.